Hey guys and welcome to my channel and welcome to this video. For today I was thinking, thinking to do a real-time video, real-time tutorial. I know I have been absent for a while and I know, thank you for all of your beautiful messages and all that, I'm fine. So I'm back, I think I will do a little bit more of the videos in a couple of ne next couple of weeks. I was thinking to do a spring a marathon so let, let's just see I'm not gonna promise anything I'm just gonna see how we'll have time inspiration and all that for the first one I was thinking to start with a little butterflies and some flowers we will be using some masking fluid and also we will be using some salt, so just prepare that. If you don't have a masking fluid, well, of course, you can just uh, cut masking tape, just glue it onto uh, a sticker paper and some paper that you can unglue it from. You can also use a parchment paper for that. I do believe it would work. Just glue your tape on top of it and cut the shape of the butterfly, glue it onto your watercolor paper and you can use it instead of the masking fluid. I do have a video about that, so I will place the link right now here up, you can see it. So you can see here the entire process and how I actually do that. So I'm starting with my sketch. I did draw the sketch earlier, so sketch is available for download from my website. You can find a link in the description box and just download the sketch for yourself. As I said, this will be a real-time tutorial, so we will be painting together using some masking fluid, some salt, so there, there will be pauses. Just prepare that, prepare yourself for that. First thing, um, I hopefully you have downloaded the sketch or just uh, draw it yourself we will trace our sketch but before that i do wanted to tell you i'm using this centenaire watercolor paper it is cold press watercolor paper 100 percent cotton it is 300 gsm or 140 pounds also 18 by 26 centimeters or 7 by 10 and one quarter of an inch so for all the videos i will be doing uh, for the spring marathon i will be using the same paper because i do believe Later on, when we finish with all of our uh, paintings, I will try to make a sketchbook to put it into a sketchbook. I'll see <laughs> if that's gonna happen. You know, I have a lot of plans. Sometimes they, they just work and sometimes they don't. So um, as I said, I will be using all same sizes of paper. So if you do wanna put it into your one uh, book, when you finish, it, finish with it, just have that in mind to use the same size of the paper. It doesn't have to be the same type of the paper, just the same size. So let's just trace that. I will be using this uh, graphite paper because I am using uh, I am using a block of papers, but if you're using a single sheet, you can put it onto your window and trace it like that. You don't have to use a tracing paper or um, graphite paper. So let's just place this. I just want to see how I want to place my sketch like that. Just a little bit here like that. So I will glue that so it doesn't move. And well, I guess just pick up my like that. I have just picked up the block of the paper and glue this so it doesn't move because if it moves, you well, you know, you can't put it back <laughs> to finish your sketch. So let's just trace those details. The painting will be quite dark, so I'm not really worried about the darkness of my tracing as I said these parts are going to be quite dark and we have one flower here petal and a little butterfly and for the butterfly I will be using a masking fluid because I do want to make him white and stand out so since everything else around it will be quite dark 
I do want to make that little butterfly butterfly white so this is going to be the flower in the background not gonna bother myself too much with the details it will be a little bit blurred so let's just see everything is traced yep you can remove the graphite paper like that and now I will just use this kneaded eraser I do have a graphite all around my paper I don't really like that so moving it around smudging it around onto my watercolor paper so I'm just gonna pick that up that excess graphite like that it's not really to lighten my sketch but as I said just to pick up the excess graphite this is a kneaded eraser from Faber and Castell I believe you can find it on Amazon or basically any store with school materials art supplies I do believe you can find it like that so that's gonna be our sketch and I'm not gonna glue the tape around because I'm, I'm not gonna be bothered with the with the edges I do want to make it uneven so I have here masking fluid from Dollar and Rooney this is watercolor mediums art masking fluid so that's the one I'm using I like how thick or thin it is so you have a, an old masking fluid well I believe that's something that you could have a problem with later on when removing so let's just start with his little legs I'm using here this um, this is a silicone brush actually for makeup if you have maybe um, masking marker you can use that instead of masking fluid here to do these thin lines for the butterfly but later on we can use a little bit more if we didn't put somewhere masking fluid we can use a little bit more of the some white gel pen or something like that so I'm gonna start with my butterfly and I'm gonna get just a little bit bigger silicone brush for that so it doesn't take too long to put that masking fluid I think I did a video about that how I use masking fluid with a silicone brush but of course you have to be careful not to scrub too hard on your watercolor paper because you will scrub away the masking fluid from it so just putting that up You prefer you don't want to put give your masking fluid so much air you can just um, put some onto into a cup or jar so like that a little bit more needed and this one dries quite fast so I can already see it drying in some places and I'm not really trying even to be this so much precise with my edges so. 
I'm not gonna say this is really the best way to put your masking fluid using silicone brushes, but I really do hate ruining my brushes, so... I do it this way. Maybe give myself a little bit more work. But there you go. And now when masking fully dries, it just gets so easily off of your silicone brush. You can see how it just removes very, very easily. You don't need any water, nothing. It just goes down quite easily. Before we move on to the next, I just realized that I do want to put a masking fluid onto this flowers also. So I'm sorry to, I guess, play around with you. But I forgot to put a masking fluid on top of those. So you don't have to, again, put it. It will be just uh, easier to avoid painting that part if I put the masking fluid on top. So I decided to add it here also. So I'm just adding it a little bit more onto this flower. So. That's definitely it now. Let's just leave this to dry. So now that this is completely dry, we can move on to painting. And first thing I will do is going to be to wet the entire paper. So I'm just gonna go all the way around. You don't have to go to the e all the way to the edge or you can, that's just up to you. Just adding water and I will just leave that water to soak in slightly into my paper while I'll prepare paint and I have here some green pick up a little bit more of the green this is from my cozy collection and I know a lot of you have been asking me about that set of watercolors when it's going to be available again i am i do have some uh, paints prepared and they will be very soon in my shop but i have to tell you that you know all the sets that i do make are available in limited editions so i'm not repeating the sets and if you want a set you have to be fast and get it straight away because what I make is everything in that from that set and Kuzi will not be, <laughs> unfortunately, available again in the same set. Maybe some colors will be available in other sets, but same set just won't be available again. So my advice to you, if you find some set interesting and thinking about getting it, purchasing it, well, get it as soon as possible because once it's sold it's sold and it won't be available again i'm mixing a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow just to create that warmer green like that so my paint has soaked quite in i'm gonna get a larger brush a larger round brush and just pick up that green go around here and there just topping in that green I do want quite saturated colors so don't be afraid to add the pigment a little bit of the that similar to sap green, yellow, just again top in here and there, 
like that. So just add a quite amount of pigment. Topping it in, topping it in. And I will pick up some clear, some yellow, just yellow. And top that in here around my butterfly. Like that, and just maybe add it here, some here and there, like that. And the flower we want to paint in pink. I do have here some pink. I will pick up a little bit more. So let's just pick up quite amount of that pink and just top that in where that flower is. You can see I'm just topping in because I don't want one same even wash all around. I do want it to be different here and there like that. And well, I guess here is going to be those are going to be green. So I'm just adding a little bit of green there looking where I want to add something more and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of this uh, wow pink. I almost use that one the entire the entire one so not really much available anymore. I guess you can see which one I'm using the most. So like that. Just top in here and there a little bit of that pink and I will get some more of the green quite dark and saturated mix it in with a little bit of the black I know I'm a fast painter <laughs> well I get that from people they tell me you paint too fast it's hard to follow sorry about that I know I'm a that can be quite annoying. I'm just doing some stems and some shadows here just beneath my flowers. That black. Like that. And I do want to add here a little bit more. That's going to dry out, but in blooms. And that's what I want. Like that. And I'm going to just get a little bit more of that pigment. Top it in here and there. Dark one. It is going to blend in and bleed. Maybe a little bit more around my butterfly. Because we don't want when that, when we remove that paint, when we remove the masking fluid, our butterfly to be quite visible stand out. And now I will just pick up some clean water and top in just the clean water here and there. And since the paint is still wet, it will move it slightly and create beautiful textures in the background. Like that. And also I will get salt right now. And just sprinkle some salt onto my flowers to create beautiful textures on them also. And if you like, you can just sprinkle here and there also on the background. So like that and I will get a little bit smaller brush this time and do a couple of more splatters with some green. Add a little 
little bit more around and then some clean water again and we will just leave all that to dry I guess just looking whether I want to add some darker tones maybe here in the corner like that and some few splatters and these uh, watercolors are granulating so the pigments are splitting like that and I will of course leave that to dry just a little bit more of the details here some got lost so like that and I do want to add maybe a few more details here that's just optional you don't have to mix in green and black There you go and let's just definitely leave this now to dry so this now completely dried and dried and we can remove salt the rest that is not dissolved into the paint right so you can see the beautiful textures split of the colors here how the salt just moved all the pigment so like that I've removed all the salt I will also remove the masking fluid now we won't be going through the background anymore so and you can see now that the masking fluid is not old it just removes easily Just pick it up and there is no problem as when it is old then you have troubles removing it it just rips up your paper and now we will do a little bit more of the details to the butterfly to these flowers and to that for this flower and I will just get this brush first I will start with pink just add a little bit more texture to our flower just mixing a little bit more of the pigment like that and then I will just add just to a few parts just to give a little bit more of the definition to my flower just rinse my brush and then just move the paint and I won't be adding to the entire flower maybe just like that just to add a little bit more definition especially to this part that it's nearest to the center of the flower but we don't want any particularly harsh edges because that should be looking blurred in the background so just remember to soften all the edges that you add if you want to add a little bit more of the paint to so those flowers also just a little bit smoothen up to get those edges like that so i believe that that will be almost enough just a few toppings 
Now the paint is wet like that. So that's going to be our flowers. I will just get a little bit more of that darker. Sorry, that was my tablet. My phone, my tablet, just ringing. Just stopping in a little bit more. Like that. There you go. And now I will just move on to finishing these. And I'm going to use the same colors, a little bit of uh, pink. And this time I will pick up some blue. Mix it in with that pink to create some violet, violetish color. A little bit more of the pink, like that. Just gonna put into those to those flowers like that, and also to the second one. Very very light wash to this one. Then I'm gonna pick up a little bit more and just add here and there, like that. A little bit of the pink. And you can pick up a little bit of the paint with your brush, if you think that's necessary. Like that. And then I'm going to get green mixed in with a little bit of the black and do this stem. And first I will just, let me just turn this around. I will just go over stem on the right side like that. Just going to get a little bit more of the black that and then rinse my brush just smoothen it also onto the other side like that so that's gonna be for the stem and then I'm gonna do a couple of details to that darker part of the flower like that just adding like that and then just smoothen that in with this and a little bit of the yellow just to give it some texture like that and then pick up some black mix it in and then just tap here and there also like that a little bit more on the sides a little bit of the yellow like that Again, if you want to pick up a little bit of the paint, just to create some highlights, you can do that. And some darker pink, just to create some details. Because these flowers aren't in, um, in shadow. In um, they are not blurred but quite visible, so like that, and then again a little bit more of the black just on top, have the butterfly 
And for the black butterfly, I will use a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the blue just to create this slightly neutral color. Yellowish neutral and then just go and smudge it on top of the butterfly just to create a couple of shadows on it because this butterfly is almost white. So we're just creating shadows like that. dots like that and we do have one freckle here like that and I will do a couple of details I'm gonna get this thin liner brush black and just do a few details here Paint is still wet, I don't mind that, it will bleed slightly. That's fine. Just a few touch ups. doing with black you can use maybe ink if you like here I don't want to I'm gonna just use my brush Then we have these. Like that. And I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow again next to a couple of them here. Just to distinguish those two wings like that. and a little bit more of the green around my butterfly and then soften it like that just to create just to bring that white to even more focus like that there you go with the details and just a touch of again that black mixed in with green just to add a little bit more of the details to that we do want some definition there so 
go I'm just adding a little bit more of the mix of green and black and then just with a clean black brush just softening that slightly I don't want to smudge it all over I do want definition so I'm gonna I am going to leave it just add a little bit more of the pigment to some parts like that and just add a little bit more of the details but this time slightly sharper And you can, of course, decide the level of details you want or not. It's up to you. and a little bit more of that greenish just to add here and there again on the butterfly there you go and now I will get this smaller brush, get some pink do some splatters around the flower some green do a couple of splatters with that and a little bit of the yellow And at last, I will get some black and just do a couple of splatters. Just soften them. I want to make that part again around the butterfly even more in contrast so I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment around the butterfly and then just again soften it like that just to make it stand out a little bit more some darker pigment maybe here around the flowers to make them again stand out a little bit more there you go just to give it a little bit more definition There you go. I do think this first butterfly and our first 
I guess this spring painting is almost done. You know me, I would like to add something more. So I'm going to add a few more splatters. And you know what? We can get just a touch of white gouache and do just a few splatters with white gouache like that. And now we are done. So with the first one, I hope you enjoyed this one, this butterfly, and hopefully you will join me in with the next video. And guys, if you do like this video, please hit the like button, share it and comment. If you haven't still, please do subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. And well, I guess thank you again so much for joining in, for painting with me, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.